In the 1950s, there was a major problem in the Gorbals area in Glasgow. When the war ended in 1945, it had left behind a trail of destroyed homes in, all across the country, and places that were left were Victorian era slum tenements. In other parts of the country and across Glasgow, high rise tower blocks had proved a solution to these problems and offered a better housing quality. It was in 1959 that Basil Spence designed Hutchinson Town Area C with help from other architects based on the high rises over in France. They were two slab blocks, 20 storeys high, with many communal balconies. Work began on the construction of the flats in 1960, and in 1961 the Queen revealed a plaque at the base of the one of the towers. The flats opened in 1965. For a decade they were liked by the residents, but it was not to last. It was by 1975 that the real problems began to arise, and one of these problems is quite unusual for a building that we've covered on this series. The wind around the bottom of the flats was strong enough to lift you off your feet, and in the flats windows and doors would frequently blow open due to the wind, and the washing would frequently blow away when it was hung outdoors on the balconies. Along with that, the flats were designed for a hotter country with less rain, not for Glasgow weather. The flats were plagued by dampness and fungus all across the walls and ceilings, water dripping down people's walls, and insects all over the flats. The problems became so bad that some of the residents started a rent strike that lasted for a year, with the ultimate goal being to have the buildings renovated to meet modern living standards. Along with the problems of the building's design, there were other problems too, like vandalism. This led to the flats being considered as one of the worst places to live in the UK. The demands were finally met in 1987, when major renovation work began on the flats. They had new sloping roof structures to help combat the dampness and fungus, and new cladding was added around the buildings. The renovation work was finished in 1988, but it still wasn't good enough. The problems that had plagued the buildings from the very start wouldn't go away, and the dampness problem continued as if nothing had even happened. In 1993, the council decided to figure out how much it would cost to make the buildings habitable, so they came back with a price of 15 to 20 million pounds, so they decided on demolishing the buildings instead. People were moved out of the flats in preparation for demolition. Doko Momo International, a group with the primary job of preserving modernist architecture, argued against the demolition of the buildings, wanting to have them listed as preserved buildings, but they couldn't stop the inevitable. It was on Sunday the 12th of September 1993 that the council invited people to watch the demolition of the blocks and made it a public event. However, the demolition company had put twice the amount of explosives needed to bring the buildings down safely and the council had put the viewing area too close to the buildings. When the charges went off, debris went flying into the crowd and tragically killed a 61-year-old lady who was viewing the demolition and injuring four other people. This directly caused Glasgow to stop having public explosive demolitions for 10 years in case this tragedy repeated itself. Explosive demolitions returned to the Gorbals area with the demolition of Stirlingfold Place and two of the Caledonia Road flats. That's it for Season 1 of Glasgow History. Season 2 will come out in mid to late April and will hopefully have some improvements over Season 1. I don't want to give too much away about season two, but two areas that will have some videos made about them are Mary Hill and Royston. Thanks for watching, see you all in April.